everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's gonna to be an exciting video because we're gonna be talking about the ultimate camper van flooring guide. In just a minute, we're gonna go through a whole entire slideshow. We're gonna go over tips, tricks, products, stuff that I recommend. We've been working on the floor of this 2020 Ford Transit. If you've been following the recent live streams, we're doing step-by-step. -step. We have a playlist if you guys are interested in watching this whole entire process take place. And during this process, I had put together the ultimate camper van flooring guide. And this is meant to help you guys out, something you guys can follow. And we're gonna go ahead and just get started. The first thing I wanna talk about is your plan. You need to make sure that you have some type of plan when you are starting this whole entire process. So consider your van layout floor plan. For example, where things go, your bed, kitchen, power, plumbing, etc. All that stuff is gonna affect your floor, believe it or not. Now in some builds, you can just start with the floor straight up and then later on plan where additional items are gonna go. However, you may find that doing some pre-planning and finding out where those items are gonna go in your van will actually help you have a more enjoyable experience as far as using the van when everything gets built and finished. Next, we want to consider the properties of the floor materials that are used. You might want to look at their weight, thickness, abrasion resistance. Those things are going to depend on how you use the van. And that rolls right into aesthetics versus budget. So if you're not going to be too heavy on the floor, you want to go with something simple, more budget, that's fine. If you want to go more to the aesthetics, more of a higher end, the look and feel versus practicality, that's something to consider. Next, we'll talk about is soundproofing important to you? Next, we'll talk about what season are you going to use your van in? Is it going to be just a springtime, summer, fall, winter? Uh, that'll have to do with the insulative value of the floor you decide to go with. Next, we'll talk about does your floor system need to provide insulative value? And then last but not least, is it easy to clean? Some flooring, depending on which ones you pick up, may be harder to clean or keep clean. And so that may be something to consider as well. Let's jump in and talk about what you need to know about the camper van floor layers. This is my opinion as far as how the floor should be made. And the reason is because each layer has a job to do. The first one is sound dampening. So sometimes this DIYers will forego this and not use any type of material for sound dampening. And that's okay, this is just more of a nice to have, I'd say. But you definitely wanna have insulation, you wanna have a strong subfloor, and then finally, the top layer. We're gonna go and break out each one of these and explain what they do and how you will actually use that in your van. For sound dampening, we're going to use a couple examples here and then we're going to get into this description. So let me go back here to this. So throughout the video we're going to reference this little model here. So this little example. So this shows you all the layers of the floor. But when we jump back to the slideshow we're going to talk about this. Killmat or Dynamat, those are two companies that you can use to help sound deaden the van. It can reduce road noise. And this is what the material looks like. It's got a foil back and then it has this almost like a tar kind of sticky back to it. And that's what it is used to adhere it to the van or even your walls. So you can use it in multiple places within your van. All right, so what does this layer do? This layer allows you to apply a sound dampening material such as kill mat or dynamat. So we're talking about the first layer of your van floor. Now the properties of this material change the resonant frequency of the van's sheet metal floor and instead of a ting sound, it lowers the frequency to more of a thud. I know that's a technical way to explain this, but that's what it does. So think of the weight of this material. You can get this in all kinds of different weights. This is a 50 mil, so it's the thinner version. And if you need more sound deadening effect, you can go thicker. Sometimes people like to use the thin stuff for the floor. It's easier to cut. 
but you can use the thicker stuff for the walls of the van. Sometimes they make, makes more noise, so the thicker material works well. What's cool is the adventure wagon kit that we purchased for this build included the sound dead material in the kit. Uh, there's all different ways to, all kinds of different ways to purchase this. There's links on Amazon. There is, uh, this comes in kits, and then you can just buy it. You can actually get some of this at car audio stores, but if you're building a van, you're probably going to want to buy more material than they actually have in stock. But simply by adding this material to the van floor, you're reducing the amount of noise that comes through the floor, and it just creates a quieter environment inside the van. Let's go to the Killmat website so you guys can just get familiar with this product. Now, there's no affiliation with any of the products in this video. This is just helpful information for you guys going forward. But this one is Killmat, so there's the logo. You guys might be familiar with that. I've seen it on some YouTube videos and some builds. But if you go to products, we have a couple different ones right here. So down here, this Killmat 50 mil, this is the one that I purchased. But as you can see, there's different ones. There's even an extra thick one that's 100 mil. And the boxes, the higher up you go, so the thicker the material, the less square footage you're going to get because they're going to use the same box. So the 50 mil, the reason it's nice to have is you're going to get 50 square feet. So you can definitely do a van floor, no problem. And then you'll have just a little bit extra to put maybe in the sides of the van. But if you're doing the whole van, maybe two boxes of the or like 100 square feet would be great. Now a roller is something you're going to want to buy. It's just a rubber roll, roller and it allows, uh, when you roll it on the kill mat, that is what's actually making the contact and giving proper adhesion to the floor. If we hop on back, we'll go to Dynamat. Now you guys might be familiar with Dynamat. If you have sound systems in your car or you're upgrading your sound system, this is a really good way to make your car sound better. And not only for cars and audio systems, but vans as well. So that's what we're talking about. So we'll go to products and we'll go to, let's click on this one. And you can see it's pretty much the same type of material. It's just from a different company. But they have a light version, which would be the thinner mill. And then they have the, the thicker as well. That way, just gets you familiar with those two companies. Both great products. There, there are other products on Amazon that you can check out, but these two are pretty much the top ones, in my opinion. This is a photo of me working on the van behind me, and this is when we were starting off on the floor. The first thing we did is make sure we cleaned the floor very well so this product can adhere. You don't want to have a lot of dust and grime and stuff like that for obvious reasons, but this material is nice because it's easy to work with. If you see over here on the left-hand side, I've got a wood board. I'm using that to score the material so I can put it in the van. And what I'm doing is I'm putting it in between the ribs because I need the ribs to be exposed because that's actually going to take up adhesive. But the kill mat for my install is doing two things. One is providing the sound deadening but then it's also providing a little bit of thickness to offset my pieces of lattice. So we're going to jump to the back of the van just for a minute. We'll get back to the slides here because I wanted to show you the reason for that. So if we look at our little model here, we have the layers of the van floor. So this middle piece is a piece of a white lattice and it's a quarter inch thick. So the rib of the van, the thickness of the sound dead material, the thickness of the piece of lattice, mixed with the thickness of your adhesive that you're going to use, so this marine adhesive, what that's going to do is that is going to make up the space in the corrugations. So when I say corrugations, it's this white raised piece of the van floor. And so what we want to do while we're putting this kill mat down is this space we're eventually going to raise up with this piece of lattice. And I go more in detail with this in the 
playlist of the van floor install. So make sure you reference that if you have any questions on what I'm talking about. But these pieces of lattice are really nice because they're giving us the ability to make up that difference and it supports this foam that we'll talk about in a second from sagging. So this foam is good. Now this is XPS foam and it has the ability to, it's got comp compressible strength. So it's not gonna squeeze out like normal foam. It's actually pretty hard. However, where these corrugations are in the van floor, you can imagine that this wide part would let the floor dip or it's possible for it to dip if there's a lot of weight on it. So what you wanna do is build up that section with this piece of lattice. And this is just a vinyl piece of, it's called lattice, but this is available at Lowe's, Home Depot as well. And you may notice this on screen porches. This is a decorative piece that goes outside of a screen porch, covers the screen wire. And uh, yeah, you can repurpose it for underneath the floor. What's nice is it's not wood, it's a vinyl. So you don't have to worry about it rotting or anything like that. All right, let's go to the next slide. Our next layer of the floor is our insulation. And uh, this is the first place that you can add a lot of comfort to your van. It's gonna make sure, it will help a little bit with the sound dampening of the floor, but it's also gonna help you with <laughs> your bare feet too because if you wake up and you're up in the mountains and you get out of bed, instead of having that cold sheet metal floor, you're gonna have a little bit of a separation of that cold temperature because of the insulation you're gonna put in the floor itself. And so the technical term is called decoupling. So what we're doing is we're separating the floor material from absorbing that cold temperature of the metal. And we're doing that by putting a piece of insulation in the middle. Hot temperatures are good too. The road is extremely hot during the summer. And to help that not come up through the floor as much, the insulation helps as well. I'm going to show you an example of what I put in the floor. So this is XPS insulation. The one that I'm using is from Owens Corning. It's called Formula 150. And it's an inch and a half thick. I'm sorry, it's one inch thick. We couple that one inch thick foam with our half inch flooring and that gives us an inch and a half thickness for our flooring. And then note over here on the right hand side, we're going to talk about this in an upcoming slide in just a second, but the compressive strength is important. You can use many types of insulation, but you need to make sure the one that you choose is, has the ability to be compressed. Because if you use something like have like wool, or the 3M Thinsulate, what's gonna happen is it's gonna smush and you're gonna lose all that insulative value. Plus it's not gonna support your floor too well. And we'll go over actually how you can still use that if you want to, but you're gonna have to have a different building method in mind. Let's go over types of insulation. For all these examples, we're using a standard one inch thickness. The first one we talked about, the XPS, so that stands for extruded polystyrene. That's that pink rigid foam board. It's pink from Home Depot, and there's a company called Green Guard, and that is green, it's from Lowe's. Uh, but they're pretty much the exact same thing. So this one right here, this is a four by eight sheet, one inch. R5 is the insulative value. So what we're talking about is this right here. So we're talking about this foam piece right here. So let me just hop on over to Lowe's. Well, we'll do Home Depot first. Okay, and then once you're there, Let's go to, I'm going to type in XPS insulation board. And so you see, that's what we have. They do make different thicknesses. If you're okay with going with a thicker floor, now remember, 
the more that you add to your floor, the lower your ceiling height gets. So if you're trying to make use of every inch of ceiling height, you know, that extra additional inch of flooring insulation may not be that valuable to you. It just depends on kind of what you're looking for. And price-wise, there's not too much of a difference between a one inch and a two inch sheet. But if we click on the one inch, we can go through here and we can see what it looks like. And then if we go to specifications or product details, you can actually see what it's all about. And for these reasons, this is why a lot of people like to use it in a van because it's really resistant, resistant to moisture. It's very durable, but it's not gonna squeeze out when you put weight on it because it does actually have a PSI rating. But right here, let me see if I can zoom in on this. The 150, which is what I have in the van, has a compressive strength of 15 PSI. What that technically means is if you had a one by one inch square on the foam, you can put 15, up to 15 PSI or 15 pounds on that one square inch and it's gonna be able to hold it up. So that's why I was saying if you guys have the planning part of the floor while you're doing your planning, say for example, you have a really heavy power system. And if you don't have something to support that power system, then you know your floor is gonna sag or smush. If there's an area like that in your van, what you may wanna do is, if the weight is enough for this foam to hold it, good. But in a minute, we're gonna talk about 3M Thinsulate, Havlock Wool, those type of materials. And those compress, we need to, replace the foam in those sections with a piece of either wood or like a one inch square aluminum tubing, something to for the weight to be distributed on the floor of the van. And I'm actually gonna skip to, let me skip to a photo so you guys can understand that. We'll come back right here. You see these pieces of aluminum? Right here in the van, I have a very heavy slide out, full extension slide out tray. That's very beefy, and I wanna make sure that when I compress my bolts, I don't squeeze the foam. So I have these pieces of one inch aluminum tubing in the floor, they're embedded in the floor, and they're directly glued to the metal of the van. They're not sitting on top of the foam or anything like that. When the wood goes on top of it, what you're gonna have is something like this. And now anything I put on top of that area, especially this slide out tray that's gonna go right here, it's gonna make sure it does not squish the foam down. If you do get a chance to plan ahead and know where things are gonna go in your van, it's good to reinforce certain areas like the kitchen galley, especially the power system or the water system. Those are another two areas that I would recommend that you do that. This is how to read and understand that information. We're gonna hop on over to Lowe's real quick. Lowe's, we got our green guard. And let's see, this is half inch. Let's go to one inch. XPS, the same type. And this one has a minimum of 25 PSI. So this is a, oh, you guys can't see that. <laughs> Hold on a second. So this one has 25 PSI minimum compressive strength. I haven't used this one before but it has a little bit, it's a little bit of a stronger one. All right, moving right along. That is the extruded polystyrene, XPS, rigid foam board. Next, let's talk about this next one, which is additional options. We're gonna talk about 3M Thinsulate, rock wool, spray foam. And the note that I wanted to make was, 
just like that aluminum tubing that goes across the floor, you're gonna make sure you wanna have something supporting this product because the only thing that's gonna be supporting the floor is are those aluminum tubing, or the one inch tubing if you put them on the floor or if you do wood. So if you do that and that's what the floor is sitting on, what you can do is the gaps in between, you can fill in with this compressible material. For example, 3M Thin Slit, which I have right behind me. You can see we've got good thickness, good loft to this material, so it's gonna insulate really well. 3M Thin Slit is good for being hydrophobic. It doesn't attract water. And, but you can see if we use this for the floor, we would completely smash it. We need to make sure that a product like this, we have something I'm going to get a piece of tubing over here. You're going to make sure you have something like this, a couple of behind, beside it, that when, you, that when you put the floor down, if you guys can see, so then when you put the floor down on top of this, the weight of the floor is on this metal part, but this is providing the insulative, your insulation. Same thing with Havelock. A lot of people like Havelock. But the same thing, you're gonna, you can't set the floor directly on Havelock. You're gonna have to have something to support it. You can use aluminum tubing. You can use wood. Now this is a two by four, this is a bad example, but like a two by two. If you had a two by two, which is an inch and a half by an inch and a half, you could do something like this, spanning the floor, and that would be able to support the insulation so you wouldn't crush it. Now, there is a reason that people like to use this material. Rockwell is another one we'll talk about in a second. But this spray foam, for example, you notice the R value is 6.5, so it's much more than the flooring. But it's pretty messy. If you went this route, it'd be the same method of having some type of aluminum or like a, a one by one piece of wood supporting the floor. But the foam, you're going to have to spray it down on the floor. It's going to expand, and then wherever it goes, you're going to have to find a way to grind it off. Now, I have seen videos where they have a machine with a bunch of sanded rollers, and they can lay it along their strips and file down the foam, but it looks like a lot of work. It's something I wouldn't recommend. And another thing is... The way that the foam expands, like the expansion rate, if you spray that into some type of tight area between the sheet metal, it can actually expand so much that it'll, it can possibly warp some piece of the sheet metal of your van. Just be careful when you're spraying that. Practice on one area and see how much the foam expands before you put it in a tight space. Next, we're getting to the subfloor. So the sub subfloor is pretty much the strongest part of the floor. That's where you're going to be able to drill stuff into. You can mount things in your van. So that's the wood part. So we've gone from the sound deadening part. We've gone to our spacer, our lattice piece that's going to help us distribute the load so that our foam doesn't sag. On top of the foam is where we have our subfloor, and it's traditionally about a half inch thick. That's a good thickness. If you do a three quarters, it's a little bit burlier, but it's much heavier. Cost also goes up, and it's harder to work with because of the weight. If you guys watch the live stream and see me moving the three individual pieces of wood around the van, it's hard to get it into place, and you can imagine if it was just another quarter inch thick, it would be that much harder. This piece is what we're talking about right here, the wood piece, and this is essentially what our finished floor is going to go on top of. Like I said, this is the top layer. It's going to it's, this is the layer that's going to support your top layer, and it's also going to be the surface that you're going to apply your uh, adhesive or epoxy to. Now, depending on this wood material you have, 
but you may need to treat it with a bonding primer. For example, in our last live stream, we went through and talked, about, discussed about this floor. And you can see right here, we have this white. This is painted white. This is a bonding primer. This is designed so that when we put our epoxy on it, it's gonna, the epoxy is gonna adhere to the floor correctly. It is possible for the epoxy to be applied directly to the wood floor, but you can't guarantee uh, that adhesion. It might not adhere too well. But if you do a bonding primer, that ensures that you're gonna have a good bond to the floor. Just think about what material you're gonna be using if you're gonna need some type of primer for the adhesive to adhere properly. And that's, you can actually check out flooring install video 13 on the live stream. That video under the flooring install playlist is gonna show you how we applied the bonding primer. All right, again, we got a couple companies here no affiliation. Baltic birch is really popular. That's a type of plywood that's got a lot of plies to it. When you see all these highlights of nine ply, seven, five ply, that has to do with the amount of layers of wood and it also translates to the strength of the floor, like the stiffness. If we bring our, get a model here one more time. What I'm using is not Baltic birch, it's the second one from Lowe's. It's called Revolution Ply. And so a Baltic birch is traditionally going to have about nine plies. I do believe that includes the top and bottom, like the veneer that's on it. This one is the second option that I'll show you. It's, it's from Lowe's. It's a 4 8 sheet. It's called Whitewood Plywood. The company is Revolution Ply. And there's seven plies in here. And if you go to this last one, this is the one that Home Depot provides it is five ply the easiest way is the five ply is just a, it's a little bit more floppy as the, the way to describe it all right if we go to our next picture this is what we're talking about so this is the subfloor the subfloor that I have is in three sections. And these three sections are so that we can make the most of the sheet of plywood that we've purchased. I'm gonna pull up the drawing pad real quick so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, if we have the van like this, and this is, our, this is the back of our driver and our passenger seat, what we wanna have for the wood panels is we're gonna go like this. We have three panels. One, two, three. Like I said, it's so that we don't have this big seam right here. If we had a four by eight foot sheet, you can see this would be our seam. And we don't want that because depending on the flooring material you use, you may see that seam after you put your final flooring down and it just won't look like a professional job. What we do instead is break it into front, middle, and rear section of plywood. And so that gets our maximum width of the van. And then these, then we only have those two seams to put together. Now one quick question is, how do we cut this out did we use a template? So the answer is yes. You can do this, or you can make your own template, but to make things easier for you, there are companies out there that you can actually buy the uh, templates from. The one that I got mine from is AVC Rig. Again, no affiliation, just giving you guys some great information. If we go to Ford Transit, and we look at this website, we have two options. This video is focused on a DIY install. That's why we're showing you all the products and the steps. However, you can buy a all-in-one flooring system that's been pre-cut to Ford Transit, includes the insulation. However, it just depends on the budget, 
where you want to go with that. Now, a way to get this level of detail but do a DIY and stay within your budget is actually go to this part where it says paper pattern floors. There we go. So you can reuse it. What's nice about that is not, it's not a one-time use. So say you put your floor in the van and you mess something up and you needed to recut it. You could do that. But this is what it looks like. I'm going to try not to rip mine up. As you can tell, this piece right here is part of the wheel well. And then if I open it up, if I can, there we go. So you can see this is a full size template. There you go. So this is as big as one piece of the floor. You can see this just lays down on the piece of plywood. You trace it out, put it in your van. Now obviously you would have this on a table and do it, but that was just a quick example. But yeah, if, something, if that's something that you want to do, you can go here and you can actually go this route. And you can see it's budget friendly. All right, next up, let's go and talk about the top layer. The top layer is what you're going to see. You're going to see it every day. This is what you want to do. If you want more for budget, or you went more for the aesthetics, doesn't matter. This is what you're gonna be walking on. You wanna make sure that this, whatever you buy, is gonna be able to protect your subfloor from spills and it's water type. Now, an extra precaution that I did on this floor was I sealed the subfloor. So that half inch piece of plywood, I painted it, with an exterior paint that actually has a mold inhibitor built into it. And that keeps my floor protected on the bottom side. The top side we coated with the bonding primer. And so what that did is that not only protects, but promotes adhesion of the epoxy. We checked off two boxes there. But always think of water resistance. If you can imagine, if you have a drink in the front of the van or Say it's raining outside one day and the wind's blowing in really bad and you're just in that situation where you can't close the doors. You want to give your floor a chance to get damp or wet but then still be protected whenever you get a chance to actually dry it out. It's going to be a very rare occurrence but it's just something to think about as you go forward. And just like I said, make sure, you know, it might be a good idea to seal your floor prior to finishing with the top layer. And we just went over a couple of products. One note that I have here is some of the options below, meaning these flooring materials, may need expansion gaps to be added to allow for expansion and contraction. Your van goes through all kinds of different temperature changes. In the summer, it might be well over 100 degrees on the inside. And then in the winter, it can get down to below zero. You have to think ahead of time what material you're gonna use. Over here on this bottom left, Lawn Seal is what I prefer to use in a van because it's extremely resilient flooring. Let's, uh, let's show an example and oh, let me, I'm going to pull up Lawn Seal real quick. Let's go to our example. Now we're on the top layer. If you guys have seen this before, this is the coin flooring that is pretty popular in the van world because it's extremely durable. It has this kind of like a fabric back that allows it to bond to the epoxy really well. And it's part of a whole system. The lawn seal flooring 
They sell a product that is specifically designed, it's a two-part epoxy designed to install this floor. They also have a trowel that has a specific thickness that you're gonna trowel it out, almost like lame tile. We'll talk about this really quick. I'm gonna pick up a lawn seal binder, and then that way you guys can see just an example of what they have. All right, let's go to this camera. There we go. Right here, got a lawn sale book, and there's all kinds of stuff that you guys can check out. They have, they've got, <laughs> get the camera fixed, there we go. They've got wood grain finishes, they've got stuff like this. wood looks. They actually have some materials that have some type of a like a softness to the floor if you want something a little bit more comfortable. And then we'll pull out the other book real quick and show you the stuff that I've chose from or choose. Here's this one and they've got some wild stuff in here. There we go. We got the black coin floor. They also make it in gray. And they've got all kinds of different colors. They have these like speckled looking ones. They have a, some, one that's called top seal. It's an additional layer of protection that goes on top. And then it gets into pretty wild stuff. You get diamond plate. And then smaller dots. And then you have this stuff. This is more like, has like a traction quality to it, almost. If you know your van's gonna be really muddy, that might be a good product to go with. But it's all part of the lawn sill system. And if we go to the internet here, and we're gonna go to, we're actually gonna go to perfectfit.com. Again, no affiliation, but this is where I get my material from. And so you can see lawn coin. This is what is going in the van behind me. The roll width is a standard six feet. For a van, you're gonna need 12 feet. That's gonna give you a foot extra to work with. And then down here you see you have a U-notch trowel, which is specific to their install. And then down here you have the epoxy that you'll need to buy to adhere to the floor. And if we back up, there's all kinds of different products that you can use. All right, so back to this. Next we have 2-Tech-2. Two two. This is a, kind of like the new style flooring. It's a woven vinyl. And let me see if I can pull this up really quick. The two take two floor flooring is pretty cool. They have, it looks like this. You can get colors, like a woven vinyl. It's pretty nice. It's good for like sandy environments, for example. Then you can just go with like a budget vinyl sheet flooring. If you go to Home Depot, you go to vinyl, vinyl sheet flooring. This stuff is, it's good, standard. People have used a lot of this in their vans. Uh, the application process is similar to lawn seal, but it's more at a entry level price, more of a budget price. And the nice thing is, it's instantly available. You can just go right to the store. Most of that is in stock. Now we're gonna get to the interlocking LVP or luxury vinyl plank. If you don't wanna do an adhesive and you're more comfortable with doing like a luxury vinyl plank click lock flooring or interlocking flooring, 
this might be something for you. If we go to, let's see, just type in LVP. And then we want to look at one, for example, life proof. Now you might not have to have this color. The reason I pick up life proof is, let me back up here. This meets my checklist. It's waterproof. Acclimation required is zero. Sometimes it has to do with, do you need to set it inside and acclimate to the humidity and temperature? This one, you don't have to do that. It has that property of being able to withstand expansion contraction, and it has an underlayment attached, so you're not have to worry about buying like a separate piece of like thin foam membrane to put down before you put the flooring down. Scratch resistant, and so just kind of look for stuff like that when you're purchasing it would be my suggestion. Lowe's has the smart core, Home Depot has life proof, and I've just looked at those because they're waterproof. And so that's something I would suggest that you look at. This is the lawn sill flooring, and it's not glued down, but I just want to show you a photo of it and how this method that I'm using, or what I'm doing in this photo, and you guys can check it out on the past live streams, is I've pre-cut out all of my edges both on the left and the right, front and the back, so that the lawn sill is labeled to lay flat. One thing you want to do during the inst installation process is if you do an adhesive, you're going to have to roll this down to make sure there's no bubbles or anything like that. If you do that, if you can imagine, if there's a big old, if you don't cut it and you're trying to work with all this extra material around the wheel wells, it makes it really difficult to get a good adhesion, if all, along the wheel well the door seams, and the sides of the van. Pre-cutting everything out allows you to work with this type of floor material much easier. Let's go to the next slide. And these are camper van flooring installation tips that I have for you. Number one is have a plan. If in a perfect world, you'll have a plan before laying down your floor. If possible, just try to have some type of plan. What I was showing you earlier is this is a plan. We know where, for example, in the middle here, we know where the shower pan goes. We've got our seat area taped off. We've already cut out our wheel wells. So we know where the power system's going on the left. We know where the water system's going on the right. We've cut holes for our vent water drain. By doing that, we have a plan, and it's just going to make the flooring install that much easier. And just like I said, especially if you need to identify locations throughout the van, we will be drilling or cutting through the van floor. Once you put this down, it's extremely difficult to, for example, find those holes where the pull-out tray went. We need to make sure that those are identified any place that needs to be if you wanted to add something later, you could see how much more difficult it would be to add it later versus being able to pull back the floor and do a test drill, find a place that you want to mount something, and then continue. Some examples would be a parking heater, water tank, vent line, drain, any electrical connections, bolting down of kitchen galley, heavy components such as inverters, fridge, interior seating, or pull-out loading trays, which I was just mentioning. And will you need inst installation help? Is, are you doing it by yourself or do you have people that can actually help you install it over a weekend? Are you working inside or outside? Consider where you're gonna do this. Is it gonna be outside to where temperature is gonna be an issue with how the epoxy or adhesives need to set up in the van? Are you doing it inside? And last but not least on this example is, do you have the right tools available to complete the job? And is it something that you have done before or maybe you wanna learn, for example, how to trial out the epoxy before you actually commit to it? Things like that are really good to, to think about. For example, 
the first time I did the epoxy, it was very stressful because it's, there's a time limit. When you take a two-part epoxy and you mix it together, the stopwatch starts. For the lawn seal in particular, you have 30 minutes of working time the moment those two combine. The countdown starts. What makes it more challenging is that once you mix it, you actually have to, you stir it up and then you actually put it aside for 15 minutes for it to start its curing process. Then the last 15 minutes, that's your working time. What I did on the floor here is that gives you seven and a half minutes on the left and seven and a half minutes on the right. A tip that I would give to you guys is check out the flooring install videos, but you can put, if you're doing a sheet vinyl or lawn seal flooring like this, the screw in the front and the screw in the back lining up your floor is going to allow everything to line up when you get ready to put this uh, your flooring in. So you can peel it back and now instead of having the stress of two sides at one time you can lay out your epoxy or adhesive on one side start your countdown timer and now you have seven and a half minutes to do this one side you can roll it down nice and neat peel the other side up and then go with the other side. So practice that, do a dry run, have people help you if you need to, but definitely try to do a dry run. If you just go at it and don't prep, you can only do epoxy once. That is my, my recommendation to you for a successful install. All right, let's go to, let's see, this photo is about install tips. Okay, if there's any floor penetrations you need to make, you need to do that before you get started. I talked again about having a plan. For example, right here, this was something that I needed to correct before going forward. I made the hole too small. So if you make a hole saw hole too small, this is a neat little method that you can do. Take a bigger hole saw and cut it in a board, then screw the board over the hole where you want to enlarge it. And then this board will actually be your guide for your hole saw because you can't put the drill bit in there, obviously. That's a cool way to enlarge a hole if you messed up. This was because I had a plan for my wiring and then I added much more wiring. And so I needed to expand the hole, but I needed to do this before the whole flooring process happened. Now keep in mind, I'd already planned that day to put the floor in, cut it to size, but because of this, it just takes longer. Take your time, don't rush the floor. Everything else you can usually change or modify, but once the floor is in, it's probably in for the life of the van. Over on the right hand side, we've, we're mocking up our heater over here. We've got our aluminum truss our like square tubing so that we can support our tray. You guys can see where we have our lattice glued in the floor. Now we're using marine adhesive to adhere everything. The epoxy is the only thing that's different as far as adhesion goes. But these strips are here to distribute the weight like we talked. We got our kill mat so that we can reduce the noise. And we've already tested our first piece over here. So this is a good photo to represent. If you took this photo, it would show that you are kind of planning your process out in different steps and you're double checking everything. Camper van flooring mistakes. Again, don't rush the process. Always allow for the recommended manufacturer's cure time for adhesives to be followed. I know it's exciting to get the floor down, but a lot of people I've known, you may use caulk, silicone, you say, I've used it before, I know how it works. Everything's different. Whatever this says, temperature wise and cure time, you gotta follow. Because think about this, if I take this product and I put it on the floor, and it's thicker in some areas than other areas, and that area hasn't fully cured, and then I go ahead and jump on my floor and start working on it, whereas if it had cured properly, 
it would be hard and it wouldn't be spongy. But now I've rushed and my body weight or whatever on the floor, it will smush it. And now I might have waves in my floor. So make sure you take your time with the cure time. I think the reason a lot of people rush is because <laughs> all the cure times say you need 24 hours to cure. Guess what? That's how much it takes. The main reason is because it can be extremely difficult to go back and repair or adjust something if you didn't take the proper cure time into consideration. So just like I said, say you rushed and now the floor is glued in and there's a spot that's going to be not cured properly. It's going to be there where forever. Not to stress you out, just to think about, just do things step by step. Next, wear a proper PPE. That's safety glasses, gloves, breathing apparatus if necessary, depending on what kind of what type of adhesives and stuff that you're using. That stuff can be pretty wild if you're doing it indoors and not outside. And then also pay close attention when cutting the vinyl, the sheet vinyl. Not only for your safety with the razor blades and stuff like that, because it can get really dangerous, but really to make sure that you're not removing too much material because you spend all the time buying it, researching it, paying for the shipping, because that stuff's not cheap. It could weigh up to 70 pounds, for example, for a van floor. You don't want to slip and make one cut and then now you've messed up your flooring. There we go. Let's talk about flooring mistakes. Now this photo may look very professional, but I'm going to show you some details inside on what I needed to fix. For example, I was going to have bars go straight across the whole entire floor. And then before I went to cut, I stopped uh, and I just did halfway and that made it very much easier. Not necessarily a mistake, but taking my time allowed me to adjust course a little bit. The mistake I made here, you can't see it because it's fixed, but I didn't allow enough space for my wiring runs. I needed the additional cables that I put in the floor were much thicker because I upsized them and I needed to enlarge this space. The next thing was this wire cover that I had. I had to replace it because this one didn't really cover. It was the addition of this extra plastic cover made my floor height too high. This would be like a big speed bump in the board and that wasn't acceptable. That got fixed. Over here on the right side, you can see there's two places cut out. Those were afterthoughts. I thought that on my design, I thought I could come through here and then go that way, but instead I had so much additional going up this pillar that I had to cut into the floor here. And then this one as well for the hot water heater. They were all fixed at the end of the day, no problem. This hole, again, we just talked about it being enlarged. But if you can think about it, if you had planned on doing your floor that day and you hadn't addressed these, a one day install can turn into two, three, four, maybe a week. But the reason I would say don't stress out about the van floor is because usually it's a permanent install, typically. If you're gonna take time on something, take time on the floor. It'll make sure that you don't have squeaks It'll make sure that it feels good when you walk on it. It's strong. Because like I said, the other stuff, components in your van, if you need to modify a kitchen galley, you need to change something, you can take it out of the van, work on the garage, and then bring it back in. Stuff like that. The floor is a one and done. So make sure if you're doing any type of wiring like this, that you take your time. Camper van flooring maintenance and repair. Make sure you take time to care for your floor and you're cleaning it often. Now you're buying floor materials that are abrasion resistant. Don't take that for granted. Any type of a sharp rock or sand is not usually what the manufacturer intended. If you have big things like that, your floor might not be able to handle it. 
To help this out, you can use like a rug, a floor mat, or just take your shoes off before you go in the van. It will all help extend the life of your new floor. There are companies like Inhabit, and let me back up here. No affiliation, but I just want to make sure that that's a company. Inhabit that will make custom floor covers. There's some, there's actually some vendors that will, that sell the products. They'll actually trace your floor out. And you can think of this as almost like a weather tech type mat, but on a, like a weather tech mat on steroids, <laughs> it's going to go throughout your whole entire van. And that'll also help protect your flooring. And last but not least, again, just keep it clean. This photo on the left, it's just me working in the van. Now I don't have any rocks or stuff like that, but after I get the van floor put in, I'm going to clean it. I will put a protective plastic on it because then when I bring my kitchen galley in, the flip and fold seat, the power system, what this is going to do is there's more likelihood that I might drop something or something will shift as I'm putting all the components in the van. And the, what I want is I want to keep my floor looking like the picture on the right. Nice and clean. All right, so we got a couple of people in the live stream. If you guys have any questions about what I went over today, happy to answer those really quick. I'm just going to go over a few things. One thing I wanted you guys to do is make sure you check out vanbitterhq.com. We have blog posts on there. We go through in depth, just like we talked about today on the flooring. We've got a solar section as well. So don't forget to check that out. The next thing I want you guys to check out is a DIY van build cheat sheet. So I have put together the DIY van build cheat sheet. It's essentially an Excel document of the last three years of all my Amazon purchases that pertain to van parts, stuff that I've bought, parts that I've vetted, and I put them all into a nice organized Excel sheet. That goes over electrical, we have fasteners, hardware, HVAC components, roofing, solar, which in the future we're going to have an awesome video on this van behind me. But for example, if you hover over the link, it's going to show you what that product looks like on Amazon. And you can go to Amazon to purchase that product. Definitely helps out the channel. So we appreciate that. But this list is really to help you guys out. It's I put it together. It's a good place for me to reference when I need to repurchase materials and I don't want to go look them up again. I just go to the DIY van build cheat sheet. I click on what I need to. I find it very quickly, especially with tools. If I have any of these tools here and I break one or I need to buy another one, they're right here. They're easy to access. Currently, the list has over 250 curated items. For me, all this stuff here is stuff I've actually used in the shop. And it's gonna help you save time and money. You're gonna save time because the list is organized. You'll save money because you won't be having to repurchase products and kind of be let down. You'll know that this is something that I used, I've used before, and I'm, it's made it onto the list. We've got more products coming onto the list. One's from the power system that I just built, as well as some other ones from a live stream that we talked about. It's a growing list. It's always being updated. So if you want to get it, it's completely free. Type in your name and email address. Click download. It's going to go straight to your inbox. You can also check it out on vanbuilderhq.com or the link in the video description below. So once again, make sure you're signed up for the DIY van build cheat sheet. I think it's really going to help you in this DIY van build process. We'll be adding some links to some of the products that may help you from Florin as well. The next up, just want to say any comments are welcome. If you have any questions throughout this video, hopefully right now you can get a live stream really quick if you do have a question. If you missed this live, don't worry. Put your question in the comments below. I'd love to read through those. If I can answer it quickly, I will. But if I don't, I'm probably looking up the answer for you and we'll put that into a future video. Again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Subscribe so that you guys can get all this updated information. Not only does it help the channel, but you'll be able to notified. You'll be notified when the live streams come out. The live streams are pretty random. They're usually in the afternoons, depending on how I'm building the van out. But if you're subscribed, you're going to get that notification and you'll get to see me live. And that's a great time to ask me any questions you have that are van related. Also, don't forget to like this video. 
Share it with your friends if you find it helpful or you have somebody that's building a van out and you think this video would help them with their process. And uh, let's see, do we have any more questions in the comments? We're gonna wait just about two minutes here. I see we have a couple people in the live stream. If you guys have a question about flooring, I'm gonna show you this little model real quick and we'll be on here about two more minutes and then we'll end the live stream. Now, the van floor is not in, but the cool thing is when we put this into our blog post going through this whole entire process, we're gonna have photos of the in process We'll do an update video, so definitely get subscribed so you can check out the live stream for the final videos coming out. And uh, yeah, last but not least, I'll go over this one more time. We'll take a photo of this so you guys can see it when the post goes up, but this is a good way to understand why you need to pre-plan, take your time on the flooring because it's a bunch of layers. Each one has its job, sound deadening, floor support, insulation, which is one of the most important. You have your half inch ply right here, which is your subfloor. That gives that massive strength to your system, your floor system. Now between this layer, the sound deadening, the lattice, the foam and the subfloor, we're using the Loctite Marine. So this is the PL Marine. It sets in 30 minutes, but it does a full cure in 24 hours. I would not, after you set weight on it, I would wait a full 24 hours before you take that weight off. I know it's a whole day, but trust me, you're gonna really enjoy how it holds your floor together. And then last but not least, we have the lawn seal. For our example, just in a recap, we did an exterior paint on the bottom of the wood that exterior paint had a mold preventative so that if we have any moisture underneath the floor that we can't get to, for an example, we're not going to have that risk of mold. On top of it, we used a bonding primer. So that preps our wood surface so that when we put our epoxy on for the top layer, everything adheres very well. And if you do those steps, take your time, you do it right, you're going to have an excellent floor package here and you'll be able to really enjoy your floor for the life of your van. All right, that is it for this video on the Ultimate Camper Van Flooring Guide. Hope you guys enjoyed. Looking forward to those comments, and we'll see you guys in the next live stream.